In 2012, I weighed 275 pounds and I tried desperately for years to lose the weight, anything and everything, but I got nowhere. And honestly, I thought that it would be hopeless. Eventually I did figure it out and I was able to lose 50 pounds in three months. But in this video, I wanna share if I were to do it all over again and lose that weight right now, how I would do it in four easy steps without putting myself through all the that I put myself through to figure it out. Step number one, honey. I am not a doctor. Don't listen to me. Always consult a medical professional before changing anything to do with your health and diet. This is just my experience and what worked for me. Start where you're at, meaning eat what you're eating already, but choose the low calorie version. Here's the thing, I was eating thousands of calories a day. Plus, I had emotional eating. I was expecting myself whenever I tried a new diet to go from eating thousands of calories to completely restrictive, taking away food groups, crazy fad diets, and I expected myself to stick to it. It was so overwhelming that I just, I couldn't do it. I kept failing, it wasn't sustainable. When I figured it out, I realized, hey, I like what I'm eating now. So what if I just went to the store, looked at the labels, picked my favorite foods, but chose the lower calorie version? Just for example, like I was eating three or four plates of dinner per night, expecting myself to go from eating like that much food to this much was too much. So eating the same amount of food that I was eating, but choosing the lower calorie version, I was eating less without eating less, if that makes sense, because I was eating less calories, so I was in a calorie deficit, and I was getting used to being in a calorie deficit and choosing the low cal version, but still getting to eat the same amount of food. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of low cal, and what happens is, the calories you're saving in every food that you choose add up and before you know it you're in a deficit and you don't even realize it ketchup this is the regular ketchup 20 calories per tablespoon the low cal no sugar added ketchup five calories a tablespoon so already that's 15 calories just on ketchup that you're saving every time you use it. Next one, milk. I was drinking the regular 2% milk and one cup is 130 cows. Now the cool thing with milk is you can go really low cow or you can go just a little bit low cow and I do both. So this is almond milk unsweetened from Costco, 30 calories for a cup. So just by choosing this one, you're saving 100 calories. Or you could go with this one, this is protein milk and it's Joya from Nielsen and one cup of this is 110 cows. So if you would rather just do a little at a time, you're saving 20 cows by drinking this one. And this is more protein than the regular milk, so it kind of like balances itself out. One other example I'm gonna give you is jam. This is the regular jam. A tablespoon is 50 calories. I now use the Dora jam. It tastes very similar. It's 25 calories for one tablespoon. So you're literally getting the same amounts, but you're saving calories by choosing the right one. Step number two. Once you become consistent with step number one, then you can move on to number two. So I tried to do way too much too fast. What I learned is I had to get used to step one first in order to be successful. And these steps, and I didn't just lose 50 pounds in three months. I went on to lose 130 pounds and keep it off for over nine years. So I've learned a lot along the way. Getting consistent with step number one before moving on to step two is really important. And step number two is, once I was used to choosing the low cal version of everything, Stop eyeballing your food portions. So like I said, I was 
eating plates and plates of dinner. I was eating an entire bag of chips every night for a snack. I was just grabbing food. I had no idea how much I was consuming. And it was thousands of calories to keep me at the weight of 275 pounds. So I decided it was time to start learning what a portion looked like and how to learn how to eat less. So I bought a food scale. This is just a um, $20 food scale off Amazon. I'm not sponsored. It was just the cheapest one and Kyle and I like deals. <laughs> And then we went to Walmart, Dollar Store, Marshalls Winners. We bought every tablespoon measuring cup. And obviously we still use these today. And like some of these are from when we first started like 10 or 11 years ago. But then we used the serving sizes on the backs of packages to learn what a serving size was. And we used that as a guide and that's how we lost our weight, the low cal version combined with portion control. We made up a meal plan using the portions and measured everything out. We ate that way for a week. We'd weigh ourselves at the end of the week and if we gained weight or didn't lose any, we would pull back just a little bit on the serving sizes because we learned if we did too much, we would fail. So we had to go a little bit at a time. And then we would try again. If we lost weight, we knew the portions were good, and then we would do it again. And Sassy, my husband, if you're new, welcome, he's lost the same amount of weight as me, he lost 50 pounds in three months, and he's kept 130 pounds off for over nine years as well. And he would have done it the exact same way if he were to start now too. If you want to know the exact meals and portions that I ate to lose the weight, you can buy my weight loss ebook called The First 50. The link's down below and code Nicole will save you 10% off. And if you're looking for a great protein powder and some really tasty protein bars, these are HTLT Sup's brand new products. This is the new Seco bar. We literally just got this in the mail today. We have not tried this yet, but we're really excited to. This is the Milky Crisp Seco bar. Do you think it's a cross between a Milky Way and a Crispy Crunch chocolate bar? Because that's what it looks like to me. I can't wait to try this. We did, however, try this new chocolate peanut butter protein powder. Um, oh my gosh, it's baller. Kyle and I were, um, we made it into protein ice cream and we were just shoveling the protein <laughs> ice cream in. We were like, whoa, that's so good. <laughs> um, so if you love chocolate peanut butter, check this. You gotta check this out. Code Nicole will save you 15% off for both of these. Plus they have a ton of other sups and good protein powder flavors. Link is down below. Code Nicole will save you 15% off. <clears throat> Number three. Choose a way to move your body that you can actually sustain. I can't tell you how many exercise programs that I tried. I did every exercise intense, strenuous. I did insanity at 275 pounds with plantar fasciitis so bad in my left foot I could barely walk. And I would try to force myself to do all of these exercises that I wasn't even physically fit enough to do at my size. And it would just make me feel defeated. I would feel so tired, I wouldn't wanna do it ever again. Plus, when you're eating less in a calorie deficit and you're forcing yourself to over-exercise or do exercise you're not fit enough to do, you're just gonna be starving all the time and so it's counterproductive. Eventually, I realized like I have to pick something that I can actually be capable of doing with pain in my foot from the plantar fasciitis and at my size and that was walking. It was hard to do it with the pain in my left foot, but I could do it a little. And then once you find an exercise that you can actually sustain, pick a reasonable amount of time to do it in. Because also what I would do is be like, okay, I'm doing an hour every day. Now I do an hour of cardio six days a week now, but I couldn't do it back then. I was not ready to do that much. And so 
Pick something that you can do. For me, it was 15 minutes every single day. Kyle and I made a pact with each other. We're gonna get out there, rain or shine, and walk for 15 minutes. Now, we had to take a lot of breaks and we had to go at a very slow, steady pace, but that is sustainable and that will actually help you burn more fat in the long run because you can sustain it and do it for longer periods of time. And because we took breaks, we still did the 15 minutes. Just every two to five minutes, we stopped. He had foot cramps, I had foot pain. We would stop, take a break, and then go. By the end of three months of doing that, combined with the portion control, we had lost the 50 pounds. And we were able to go the full 15 minutes of walking because we had built up stamina and we were losing weight. So you can slowly increase it if you wanna do more. But if you're only capable of five minutes of slow walking, start there. Don't force yourself because then you won't be able to sustain it. If you're looking, if you're gonna do all of this work and work on yourself and lose the weight, you're gonna wanna keep it off. So do things that eliminate excuses and eliminate the overwhelming feeling because what the brain does is it it doesn't like to change so it will try to throw every single excuse especially if you have like emotional eating and something like kyle and i did um it will throw every excuse in the book at you to try to get you to not change so eliminating excuses in a fun way a way that you can sustain where hey i can do five minutes set a timer take a couple breaks do what you gotta do do the five minutes commit to it and be consistent with it. And step number four, this is the most important step out of all of them. Make only one of these changes at a time. Meaning I shared three steps before this with you. Do one of those steps at a time. And I specifically ordered them in the way that worked the best for Kyle and I. So the first keeping the the portion sizes that we were eating, but low cal version, get consistent with step number one. Really give yourself time to get used to that. If you're coming from where Kyle and I were, where you might struggle with emotional eating, you're eating thousands of calories a day, you gotta get used to eating and we weren't ready to eat even a bite less. So the low cal version really helped. Then when you're ready, when you've been consistent with that and you've nailed it and you go, okay, I think I can move on now, then go buy yourself some measuring cups and do and a scale and do step two. And then don't move from there until you're used to it. And at step two, remember where you came from and that going from four plates of dinner like Kyle and I to then a couple cups you know, in a smaller plate of dinner, it's not going to happen overnight. You are going to have to work on being consistent with it. So what I'm getting at is expect slip ups, expect mistakes and know that they're normal and they're okay. What happens is every mistake and slip up that you make, it gets you closer to what actually works for you. And when you make a mistake, learn from it. So like, when Kyle and I were getting married, we had lost like a hundred pounds and we decided we wanted to speed up the weight loss to look, to lose it all before our wedding. So we took away all the treats. Well, that backfired. I ended up, we had chocolate bars for um, like a candy bar at our wedding. I ended up sneaking them all at night because I had felt deprived and it triggered my emotional eating. And so I ended up eating what I had cut out and it was counterproductive. So get used to what you're doing. Give yourself the time, learn from the mistakes. I learned from that one right after the wedding, we realized, wait, we made a mistake. We put treats back in and we were able to get back on track there. It's not an accident or a coincidence that you're watching this video. We get asked, thousands of thousands of questions in a year. Why do you do it this way? Why do you do this? Why? For reasons. We yes. have <laughs> between me and Nicole, like 50 years of dieting experience and 20 years of keeping the weight off combined almost. You're talking to right now to two people 
that struggled with weight from very young ages developed emotional eating at very young ages five for me were put on our first diets at age nine and eight we have the genetics where we could eat a buffet meal at breakfast lunch dinner and we'd be looking for dessert immediately after that and eat all night that's our hunger levels and it's still the same now so that's why we do a lot of these things to manage that yes so really give yourself time to get used to each step and then move on to the next one when you're ready when i was getting frustrated my mom sometimes would say nicole you didn't get this way overnight so don't expect the weight to come off overnight either and she's right i struggled from when i was very very young with my weight it took years to put that weight on so it's not going to come off overnight so give yourself the time don't rush it and do one little baby step at a time because that's gonna get you further than rushing everything. Then you're just gonna have to start back at step one over and over and over again. And if you're here watching this and you're still watching this late in the video, it means what you're doing isn't working. Yes. What you're doing by listening, like me and Nicole did, we listen to the mainstream diet advice. It's, doesn't, it's designed not to work. Yeah, because they want you to keep coming back and buying their products and like, yeah, you know, Kyle and I, we sell our weight loss ebooks and we're sponsored by like protein powder, but we never say you need them. We literally give you all of the tools in every single one of our videos that you can just do right now. You don't need anything. And we always say that like you don't need the ebooks. You don't need the supplements. You can literally go to Walmart and, and or wherever you shop and buy whatever food you can in a budget and eat what you like and lose the weight. But you have to be in a calorie deficit. So by doing things the way that we did them, that was how we were able to get used to things little by little and get the weight off and keep it off for as long as we have. And we're never going back because we've learned and we keep learning and every time we learn we share it with you guys in hopes to make it easier for you guys because like we put ourselves through so much crap to get here and we're hoping to save somebody or you know just have someone get inspired and go wait i don't need to make this a punishment and that's what we always say and like we have that sign up there like weight loss should never be a punishment. If you don't like it, if you're forcing yourself to do something, you're never going to get it done. And I always say, if you're not having fun, you're not getting it done. Because if you don't like it, you're never going to stick to it. Okay. Yeah. And then you start something crazy and you can't stick to it. So by making one little change right now, after, after this video, Pick one thing to do right now and start with where you're at. Can you buy a low calorie version of coffee creamer that you use? Start, can you use low cal sweetener instead of regular sugar? Whatever it is, one little thing, that's it. And be consistent with it. That's it, that's the, the start. And one of the reasons we're making this video is because we've been seeing so many people in the comments going like, I really want to do this, but I don't know where to start. I've done it all and I got nothing left. And that's what Kyle and I felt like. And that's why we made this video. And hopefully it helps, you know, inspire you guys to cherry pick something from this video and modify it to suit your own needs. And, you know, we always say like, don't copy us. Don't copy anyone. Cherry pick the best pieces and modify them to fit your own needs. But when you do that, pick something that you can actually sustain. So if you want to do this cutie, watch this fit and this fit for more fun, sustainable weight loss tips from Sassy and Colith. That's me, I call myself Colith. Um, because we're real friends losing weight in the real world, honey, okay? Um, and thanks for watching and we appreciate your support and we love you. And thanks, I'll catch you in the next victory. And now I'm gonna be a mime drinking milk. That was beautiful. Good job. Bye. <laughs>
Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.